Hello! I am here with an update on how my hormone replacement therapy is going. If you have followed my story, um, you know that I had a pretty intensive prolapse repair surgery and about 18 months after that started having some symptoms that um, ultimately we discovered were related to some hormone changes within my body. Um, I guess we'll never have a way to know whether those were direct correlation to the fact that I had the hysterectomy and although my ovaries were left intact, it is is um, relatively common for younger women to go into ovarian failure sooner and enter um, perimenopause or just full-blown menopause after that hysterectomy. So we'll never know whether um, it was the hysterectomy that directly caused my issues or if it was just good old perimenopause because I was 37 at the time of that surgery and my symptoms appeared um, around 38 and a half. So that is like right there in the middle of that perimenopause range as well. But whenever I updated you last, that was about six months ago, I had just started hormone replacement therapy. So my doctor initially just tried to give me a dose of synthetic oral estradiol. And after three, four months, we uh, just decided that really wasn't doing anything for me. So I was um, then put on a regimen of three different forms of estrogen combined with testosterone, DHEA, and progesterone in the form of a trochee. In my last video, which I will link here in the description box below, um, I did show you what a trochee looked like. I kind of explained that that goes under your tongue, that that dissolves slowly. Um, and the idea behind those is that they are supposed to bypass as much as possible your liver, which is really important for liver health and also for the absorption of the hormones, specifically the estradiol, so that, um, or the estrogen, so it doesn't go into your body and turn into estrone, which is a bad kind of estrogen for your body to have, mostly because it just tricks your body into thinking it has more estrogen than it does, and it's not a very healthy form. So the idea behind the trochees was that they go under your tongue, they are sublingually um, absorbed rather than going into your stomach, being digested, going through the liver. But ultimately, um, the thing about trochees is they really taste pretty terrible. They take forever to dissolve. They're kind of bitter and they make your mouth salivate a lot. So ultimately I felt like I was um, swallowing quite a bit of that. In my first video about hormone replacement ther therapy, I talk about how about six weeks in, I was feeling a relief of quite a few of my symptoms. So I ended up giving that that full amount of time until the three month mark. And then we did make an increase in my dosage from um, just a half a trochee a day to a full trochee a day because I wasn't um, experiencing full relief of symptoms. I didn't feel like I was my optimal self. Once we increased that dose to taking it morning and evening, uh, temporarily I did have pretty much full relief of symptoms. I did not have much of an increase of libido, but my irritability, um, moodiness, mood swings, my being emotional and tearful, that had improved. My brain fog improved. My um, joint and muscle pain that was um, pretty concentrated in my neck and shoulders had pretty much fully re relieved itself. I wasn't feeling that anymore and it was pretty amazing. Um, I was definitely a walking testament to the value of hormone replacement therapy. But I would say, probably about two months ago, I started noticing some of those symptoms returning, specifically the brain fog, more of the irritability and just kind of like, just feeling angry all the time. Now I do have two little kids. One of them has a diagnosis of ADHD um, and he is a lot. So, you know, it's kind of that hard, my husband is gone a lot for work. I don't have family support in the area. I have two little kids and a teenager I'm trying to juggle. You know, how much of it is just like life versus something's really going on in my body. But ultimately I decided that since I had been feeling relief of that and it had just kind of suddenly returned really strongly again, um, I was back to having some brain fog and again, this like neck and joint pain that I can't explain. It doesn't matter if I, rest, if I take ibuprofen, if I sleep well, if I stretch, um, ice, heat, doesn't seem to matter. That pain just uh, wasn't going away. So I reached out to my doctor who said that she felt like it was probably a good idea for us to get a hormone specialist involved. So I'm lucky in the St. Louis area that my gynecologist has a hormone specialist. She's actually um, a hormone specialty pharmacist. So she is a pharmacist who is specially trained in um, 
dosage and administration and the right forms of hormones specifically for females. So um, I was very lucky that they already have a partnership and a cooperation and I was able to meet with her pretty quickly. When I met with her, she uh, requested more blood work, which I explained in my previous video can be very helpful, especially if you're still having periods and you know where you are in the cycle, but it definitely cannot be the full story. Because in my case, I've had a hysterectomy, I'm not having periods anymore. And despite my efforts to try to figure it out with like, ovulation testing strips and things like that, I don't really ever know exactly where I am in my cycle. So because those hormone levels fluctuate throughout the month, um, getting a blood test back that says that, that, that my level maybe looks normal right now, um, it may not be actually normal for the time of the month, the time of my cycle that I'm in. And frankly, I don't even know if I am ovulating anymore. I don't know if I'm having cycles. But regardless, the one thing that was pretty obvious that was, was that even since my September blood work, so um, close to six months ago, more like five, my levels had dropped again. So I told you in my last video that since my hysterectomy, we kind of got a baseline blood work so that we had that to go off of. Um, in September, when I started hormone replacement therapy, you could already tell that those were all declining. Um, and this most recent blood work showed even further decline. And at this point, I am definitely in that range where um, it's it's considered abnormal, the red range, the, um, you know, the disease state. Now, um, they're all borderline. Like there could be doctors out there that would look at my blood work and say, I think you're fine, especially, you know, you're just entering menopause, like you're fine. Um, but those ranges are not optimal. I mean, literally those ranges are set for a woman who could be 15 to a woman who could be 80. The only um, blood test for female hormones that is delineated by age is DHEA. So that one has specific age ranges for, for where you should be. Um, so what I was referring to to determine if those levels were optimal and healthy for me was a book I mentioned in my previous uh, video as well called The Hormone Shift. She has a chart in there that she says, these are optimal levels. It should never go below this. They should never go above this. And um, if you are in replacement therapy phase, that this should be your target number. So I was able to work with my hormone specialist and talk about those numbers. And uh, she ultimately ended up increasing my testosterone from one milligram a day to two. She uh, left the estrogen as, as it was at that time. And she, instead of having me take my progesterone in the troche, is now having me take that separately as a pill at night, which has drastically helped my sleep and uh, my energy level because progesterone can make you sleepy. And I was taking that in the morning combined in my trochee with everything else and I just think it was making me sleepy because now I take it at night within 10 or 15 minutes I'm feeling pretty drowsy and it has definitely helped my sleep I'm sleeping much more soundly waking up less falling asleep easier so the progesterone has helped a lot with my quality of sleep so I've been on this new regimen for about a month this is also different because rather than being a trochee that you dissolve under your tongue or up in your cheek um I requested a different form and I was asking for a lotion or a cream, which actually this hormone specialist said, I always recommend lotion and cream because she said it's not going through your liver at all. Like there is zero um, access to the liver. You are more likely to absorb majority of the hormones. It doesn't taste terrible. There's no, you know, salivation issues. You don't have to wait for it to dissolve. You just put the cream on and let it dry and go about your day. So she um, switched me from the trochees that I was on to this cream. It comes like in um, a little pumper type of thing. And for me, I'm taking two clicks twice a day. So I don't want to do it because it's wasteful and it's expensive, but you click it, some comes out, you click it again, more comes out. Um, there are several places you can administer this. You can do your forearms, avoiding this area because the closer you get to your breast, then you are potentially putting yourself at a greater risk for developing breast cancer. So you keep it on the forearms. Um, you can do it on your lower stomach, backs of your knees and your inner thighs, kind of areas where you have thinner skin is what they said. Um, so I am much preferring this method of administration over the stuff that goes in my mouth. I highly recommend this. Um, again, these are bioidentical compounded hormones. So, um, 
from my own research, from what this hormone specialist, as well as my gynecologist, as well as Dr. Taz, the book that I mentioned in my previous video, recommend. Um, this is the safest way to go about getting hormone therapy. That being said, I have put a phone call in. I have an appointment in a couple days with her to talk to her about how I think everything's at a pretty good level, except I feel I need more estrogen. Um, when she switched me to this and increased my testosterone, she wanted to leave estrogen alone at the time because she said she didn't want to play around with both of those major hormones at the same time. That way, if I did experience any adverse side effects, we knew it was from the testosterone and not the estrogen and weren't questioning where it was coming from. So um, I do think she's going to go ahead and approve the increase of the estrogen as well because she did tell me I was on a pretty low dose at the time. The reason I want more estrogen is um, I am still having some intermittent hot flashes where I'm just getting pretty sweaty. I still feel, um, well, I feel that my irritability has returned. I told you it had gone away for a while, but I think my ovaries are functioning even less and less at this point, pretty much non-functional. So my irritability and brain fog is returning as well as my joint pain. So um, that's why I think that I am needing more estrogen. We'll see. We'll see what she says. I will update again in a few months, but I always like to give it a few months before I can um, really give you a good idea of whether something's working for me. Big takeaway message from this is just like my first video, you need to advocate for yourself. If you are feeling all of these perimenopausal symptoms um, after a hysterectomy or not, if you are irritable, moody, low libido, headaches, joint and muscle pain that you can't explain, I mean, they say it can be anywhere, like any joint, but for me, again, it was heavily focused like shoulders and neck area, um, trouble sleeping, hot flashes, brain fog, constant fatigue, all of those things, those are all perimenopause and menopause symptoms and you don't need to suffer. Um, often we just hear about hot flashes. People don't talk about anything else. There's so much more with it. And there's also a lot of people out there who are afraid of hormone replacement therapy because they believe it causes cancer. What that comes from is a flawed study that was done in early 2000, I believe it was 2001, and that study has since been proven to be flawed. It's been debunked. Um, they've talked about how the patients that were used in that study were not appropriate for the study. They were already postmenopausal. You can read about it. There's a whole lot of um, research out there about how that that study who scared everybody away from hormone replacement therapy is simply not accurate. And doctors who have done their research now are, they understand that not only do we benefit from hormone replacement therapy because we don't feel like crap all the time, like there's no reason going into perimenopause and menopause, you have to suffer and feel like crap when hormone replacement therapy can help you but also we truly need it. I have done a bunch of my own research on the idea that especially if you enter perimenopause and menopause earlier than the average age of like 52, you are at an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, heart disease. You are at a greater risk of early onset dementia. You're at greater risk of osteoporosis. You're at a greater risk of muscle loss. Um, there's other things. Those are just the major things that scare me and say we need hormone replacement therapy to function, to be optimal, but also to um, ensure our future health down the road. So, I highly encourage you, if you are blown off by your gynecologist when you say, I am feeling like crap and they don't want to do blood work or they tell you, no, well, you know, you're entering perimenopause, menopause, it's just, it is what it is. You're just not going to feel well. Um, or you request blood work and they tell you you don't need it. Or you request blood work and they tell you, well, all of your levels are normal, um, but you're... Um, just not feeling well or some resource that you have, such as the book I recommended is telling you those are not optimal levels. You need to push back. And many gynecologists are not well versed in hormones outside of pregnancy or trying to conceive. So if your doctor just really doesn't seem like she, um, is there an expert in this area? Find someone else, find a hormone specialist, find a, um, a pharmaceutical hormone specialist, like who I'm seeing or, if you've got the out-of-pocket money, you can see like a homeopathic doctor, but they don't typically take insurance. And I don't know about you, but I can't afford that. So um, I hope you live in an area where you can find someone that can help you, but don't let someone blow you off. Don't let them tell you, well, let me just put you on some birth control pills to regulate those hormones. 
that's not what you need. That's not going to make you feel best. And being on a birth control pill later in life it can cause its own set of issues and different feelings and low sex drive and dry vagina and all these other issues that uh, hormones would fix, not make worse. Uh, they'll also maybe try to put you on an anti-anxiety and antidepressant. Again, that could be an issue for you. Maybe you need both, but maybe it's low hormone levels that are making you feel really bad. Um, or it's a combo of just feeling bad every day that's making you depressed or um, you're depressed because of your hormones or because of how you feel and your marriage is suffering because you're not being intimate. Like there's a, it's just so connected and I just can't encourage you enough to advocate for yourself. You do not need to feel like crap. I'm still on my journey. I'm still trying to find my perfect cocktail, but I think I'm getting really close. I think that when I get this little boost of estrogen and I will update you in a few months, that's going to be all I need for me to feel optimal. Um, and get back to feeling like myself, whatever, whatever that means. Um, I've got some kind of strange for me weight gain that doesn't seem to be going away. Um, I'm struggling to recover from workouts like I used to. I've just got stubborn belly fat that won't go away. Um, it's just nothing is as easy as it used to be. And yes, I'm aging. I'm almost 40, but I'm not almost dead. And I have the rest of my life to live and I still have little kids at home to raise. So um, the last few months have been like real interesting of trying to help my husband understand what hormone struggles feel like because he doesn't really get that. Um, and what a challenge it is to be going through this with a two year old at home. You're really supposed to hit menopause in your 50s when most of your kids are out of the house, they're in college, they're about to graduate, they're self-sufficient. And my children are very not self-sufficient. So it's been you know, a bit of a struggle to balance my low energy and my irritability and my pain on a daily basis while also still being a positive, upbeat mom who's excited to take care of her kids. So um, just please keep looking for answers. If you have any questions specifically that this video does not answer, you can leave a comment. I try to keep up with those, but I'm worse about that than if you send me an email. Um, it's in the channel description, the channel bio, but it is personalprolapsestory at gmail.com. I'm much better about responding to those if you have specific questions. Um, I really enjoy helping you ladies out. So again, I'm going to link my first hormone replacement video. Um, this could take you to my entire channel if you have questions or um are facing uh, prolapses, pelvic organ prolapses. That's how this whole journey started for me. I had like every female organ was prolapsed and falling out and I had to have a pretty intensive pelvic organ prolapse repair surgery that involved a hysterectomy, a perineal repair, a sacro, um, oh my gosh, sacrospinous colpopexy. I had a uh, very tiny um, vaginal tape, tension vaginal tape, put in under my urethra to help with some stress incontinence I was having and all those things done at one time. So uh, that's how I got here. That was the birth of this channel. And I just love helping women. I've just been blown away by the number of women that have been helped by this channel, reached out and um, have said just what a blessing it's been to them pre-surgery, post-surgery. Um, and I thought, well, why not continue my journey? It's different now. I'm not dealing with prolapses anymore, but I am dealing with um, hormone issues. Are they from my surgery? Likely. Pretty sure I wouldn't be in complete ovarian failure with my ovaries not doing much of anything prior to 40 if it wasn't for that. But I think many women are just in perimenopause and you need just a little bit of help from hormones to feel your best. And many doctors, um, especially men, I think do not understand this and aren't well versed in the research. So I wish you the best. Good luck. Please like, subscribe, comment. Not because I'm making any money, but because that is what drives... Um, people to this channel. That's what makes it pop up in searches and allows other women to get this information. So thank you very much. Uh, I wish you the best and fight for yourselves, lady. No, ladies, nobody else is going to do it. You have to advocate for yourself. Don't take no for an answer and don't just let them prescribe you a bunch of pills. If uh, it's not what you need, you probably need a little bit of hormone help if you're around 35 or after that age. Bye.